Hi, it's Steve from DATV, your community TV station, and I'm out here again at the 2023 Centerpoint Energy Dayton Air Show presented by Kroger. And I'm here today talking with a local celebrity of sorts, and she will be, and you'll be hearing more about her, Captain Anne Marie Bruffy. And uh, she is with, I believe, the Third Flying Squadron at Vance Air Force Base. Hey, thanks for joining us, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. <laughs> yep, no, you are totally spot on. So I'm out of uh, Vance Air Force Base in Oklahoma and the part of the Third Flying Training Squadron. So the aircraft that we brought in was the T-1 Jayhawk. We do a lot of our uh, training on that air airframe, um, and so any of the students that go on to fly the bigger gray tail, so like the C-17, KC-135, will do a lot of their training initially in the T-1 before they go on to their follow-on trainings. So we are inside right now. Usually we're outside, but we have the F-16s, the Thunderbirds, they're doing their uh, wonderful act over us right now, and so we needed a little more quiet space to talk. But you're from Centerville? I am, yep. So I am from Centerville. I went to Centerville High School, graduated from the University of Cincinnati, so it's been very cool to be back and bring a T1. So as we were talking before the interview, um, you're very, you're quite young, but wow, you have really moved up the ranks very quickly. When did you fall in love with flying? Yeah, so I first fell in love with flying. Um, well, I first got my private pilot's license in 2018, and uh, my dad was kind of the inspiration for that. He was in the Air Force for 20 years, um, so he was kind of the one that inspired me to go pursue that. Uh, and then I graduated pilot training in 2020, and I've been an instructor since. So you talked about it briefly, but tell us again about the plane you fly. And you mentioned that from that plane, you can move on to the bigger planes right out of that training. Correct. Yeah. So uh, any of the pilots that are flying, like I said, the bigger tails, so C-130s, uh, C-17s, uh, any of the tankers, we do a lot of their introduction to uh, crew fundamentals, autopilot usage in the T-1. So they start their training in the T-1. We give them kind of a basic overview of what it's like to fly a crew airplane, and then they'll go to their follow-on trainings uh, to fly the big gray tails. So have you flown those other planes, or what other types of planes have you flown? So I've actually only flown uh, the T-6 and the T-1. Um, so after I graduated pilot training, I stayed behind as an instructor. So hopefully in the next couple months, I'll go on to a follow-on training and get to fly something like the 135. But uh, for now, I've only flown those two. So um, you don't have to go through the Air Force Academy to become a pilot or a trainer for other would be pilots. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of a common misconception. A lot of people think that you have to be a graduate of the academy to be a pilot in the Air Force, and that's not the case. Uh, like I said, I went to University of Cincinnati and I did ROTC there. So I got my commission uh, out of uh, ROTC, which stands for Reserve Officer Training Corps. Uh, so I got my commission there and then went on to uh, fly airplanes. A question that um, we kind of went over before the interview, what's it been like as a woman becoming a pilot in the United States Air Force? Yeah, so that is uh, kind of a hot topic right now is female in aviation, uh, just because there are so few of us. Um, so it definitely was a little different going through pilot training, being one of the only girls in my class and, you know, in a very male-dominated career field. Um, but one thing that I do really appreciate is since I have, you know, been back as an instructor, all of the outreach events that we do to inspire women to, you know, pursue careers in STEM, aviation, aeronautics. The folks that go through your training now at Vance Air Force Base, how long does that take them to complete? So it depends on um, when there is a available spot open for them. So a lot of students will get to Vance Air Force Base and then they will have about a year of a waiting period, six months to a year, until a spot can open for them. Uh, and then from there, they'll spend about a year in training, maybe a little bit more, and then they'll officially graduate from Vance Air Force Base to go on to fly their next airframe. Did I read about Team Vance? And what is Team Vance? 
So Team Vance is basically the team that is um, all of our instructors, personnel, uh, support groups out at uh, Vance Air Force Base in Oklahoma. Um, so you probably read about us doing Air Camp uh, here in Dayton. Um, so that's another organization that we have come to support, uh, and they are absolutely amazing. Uh, we were here about two weeks ago doing uh, Pet the Jet with uh, T1s and uh, T6s, which is where we kind of got together with a group of high school students. We told them about you know uh, how to pursue a career in aviation or the military, uh, and then we got to get them into the aircraft, sitting in the cockpit, uh, and then doing walk-arounds of the jets and everything. What advice do you have for any young folks who want to become a pilot? Because um, we have one of our young members that just got to go up with the Reader aerobatic team, and he was very enthusiastic about that. And you know, how would somebody like that get involved with flying? Yeah, so there are so many different ways to get involved in flying. Uh, the avenue that I took is just one of those ways. Um, but I would say just don't stop asking questions. If this is something that you're passionate about, um, go out and find the people that are doing the thing that you want to go do. And, you know, all of us just kind of want to inspire the next generation to, you know, pursue aviation, pursue aeronautics or careers in STEM, stuff like that. Um, and then also the biggest piece of advice I can give you is do not be disgruntled by, like, the roadblocks that you hit along the way. Um, so that was something that I really had to learn for myself. Um, and so when I went to pilot training, like, I hit several roadblocks like I did not succeed at everything that I did and I think a lot of people get very discouraged by that but just knowing that that's part of the learning process and that's part of the process of doing anything where the bar is set high for you is you're going to hit roadblocks. Well Anne Marie thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and thank you so much for what you do for our our country and if you cannot make it out to the air show this year we hope you can Remember that next year, 2024, is going to be the 50th anniversary of the Dayton Air Show, and you definitely don't want to miss that. Thanks for taking the time out to watch us today. You learn a lot during that initial phase of training the T6. And then it comes to kind of like a fork in the road where you say, okay, I'm going to go be a fighter bomber pilot, or I want to go oh, be... Oh, really? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, because I, I would have thought they would have said, oh, no, I want to I fly an F-15EX. Oh, but then you go to that school over there. But no, they come, many of them come to you first. So they start in the T-6, and then they that's kind of where that fork in the road comes. So if they want to be a fighter bomber pilot, then they go across the street and then they uh, work with the people flying the T-38, the instructors flying the T-38. If they want to be, you know, a C-17 pilot or if they want to fly, uh, you know, AFSOC, uh, which is special operations, or if they want to do, um, you know, like tankers, airlift, stuff like that, then they'll come through me and then we'll do that initial introduction to, okay, this is what it's like to fly a low level mission in formation with another aircraft or simulated air refueling. And we'll kind of teach them the basics of that mm -hmm. before they go on to fly like the KC-135, the C-17, C-130. Um, wow. mm -hmm. And okay. the reason they have that split track is just because the flying is so fun. So like what the Thunderbirds are doing right now is so much different than like what we would go out and do on a normal mission. So that split track, it's like, um, it's, I personally think it's very beneficial because um, if someone wants to go fly F-35s, they need to learn what it's like to be in an airplane by themselves, like a very single seat aircraft mentality that they teach over there. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Anybody have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, so it's a very single seat mentality that they teach. They do a lot of formation flying um, versus when you come over to the T-1 and you learn, it's a crew aircraft. So we right. teach them a lot of like crew coordination. Uh, we teach them a lot of autopilot operations. We teach them a lot of instrument flying um, because that's what they would go do. And like the F-15. Yeah, if they want an F-15, yeah. then they're going to be flying close formation. They're going to be flying, um, you know, stuff like that. So you said mission. Uh huh. Are you in a position where look, I could get deployed somewhere? So. And if that happened, how does your role change? Yeah, that's a great question. So. As a first assignment instructor pilot, um, when they bring us back, 
Uh, it is very, very rare. It's not impossible for us to deploy um, just because we are so young in our aviation career that typically the deployments that come out of like ATC, so uh, at Milligan's or you know Columbus or places like that, they're non-flying deployments. So because we're so young in our aviation careers, they want to get us in the aircraft as much as possible. Right. Um, so my, my primary role is just to fly as much as I can, get as much experience as I can, and then train as many students as I can while I'm here. So more and more women are becoming pilots. Yeah. Good thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, it seems like there's a big push to encourage them to become pilots mm -hmm. because they easily have the same skill sets as a, a man has, especially when you're sitting in the cockpit. Yeah. That's interesting. So they make it easier. They open more doors. How does how do they try to encourage more women to become pilots? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, primarily, we do a lot of outreach. Okay. Um, so, like I was talking about before at the air camp uh, in November. Uh, past two or three years we've come back and it's an all girls air camp so it's all females um, that are high school students that have an interest in aviation but they're not really sure um, you know what that looks like they don't really have a ton of female aviator role models so what we do is we gather up like all of our female instructors from the t6 the t1 the t38 and we fly out here and then it's just a group of us and we're all female aviators and we you know have these discussions like hey you can do this like it is a male dominated career field at the moment yeah. but that doesn't mean anything about your you know journey or your place in it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, sorry guys. Oh, that's okay. So how many students did you do you typically get at these air camps? Uh, the females. Yeah. Females. There's a, there were a lot. Um, I want to say a couple years ago we had like upwards of eighty oh, students. Oh. Mm -hmm. really? They're all from like the Dayton area, and um, you know they sign up for these air camps and. The way that we did it in November is we had like different rotations of students is how, um, you know, air camp, they set that up and each rotation, like the first one would be like, okay, this is a simulator and they would get hands on experience with a simulator. And then they would go to like, this is what mission planning looks like. And then this is like an engineering challenge for you. So one of the engineering challenge they have the females do is uh, the flight suits actually, uh, like a couple years ago, they were only designed for men. And so, you know, like with women, like our body types are different. So they didn't fit us as comfortably. And so then like their engineering challenge is design a flight suit that's like going to be better for females. And like, what does that look like? What would you like to have? And then like, they also talked about like rudder pedals, right? So the rudder pedal settings in aircraft, um, females are typically shorter than males are. So the rudder pedals were further back. <laughs> yeah. So they couldn't like reach the rudder pedals in the aircraft or like you would need like a boost in order to, you know, see over the glare shield of the aircraft. So they have them like, okay, how do you fix these problems so that they work for both females and males? Um, so one of the, the flight suit I'm wearing is actually a female flight suit. It's just cut a little bit differently. So okay. it fits me more comfortably. Um, so we kind of, they got an opportunity to talk through some of that stuff. And then uh, we did like a, a career panel where we had some of our female tower controllers, our female RAPCON controllers as well, and then female aviators sit down and talk to them about like, you know, what this career field looks like. And if you want to pursue it, like there are people that have gone before you that want to help you uh, along the way. So yeah, that would be, I guess, very intricate in detail. You know, what kind of follow-up can you do with these 80 young ladies as an example? Hey, where are you? Are you still in, interested in this? And are you pursuing it? And, you know, it's a great career and we need you and those types of things. That's wonderful, though. You know, I maybe I'll have the interview after the interview because I came up with all these great questions yeah. after I got through my... <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, but I just think it's so cool. And the cool thing is, and I'll let you go on it, you know, the, things, oh, okay. the cool thing is, is that you're very young. And when they see you, they're going to go, well, she's not much older. She's like, yeah. what, like three or four years older than me or whatever? It's like, yeah, she did it. And she did, you know, she's doing a great job at it. Oh, so, thank you. But thank you so much. I yeah. really appreciate it. It was so great to meet you. Hey, I was very excited about coming out to you. Oh, you want to talk to this young lady from Centerville, and it's like I started reading about it. I said, oh, this is pretty cool stuff. Oh, awesome. I thought it was very cool. Oh, thank you. So instead of going out there, I, I don't know if I'm going to go out there yeah. and like spray the, the T1. Mm -hmm. I'll probably just pull some things off the internet. Okay. But it'll look good, and I appreciate it and appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, thank you so much. So, yeah, thank you so much. That was great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh.